All right, so this week was a little light for AI updates, but there was still a lot to go over. And as usual, decisions that are being made that will change the landscape for years to come. Just as a reminder, I put out a newsletter every Tuesday morning, keeping you up to date on everything in AI and all the tools that will give you all superpowers. I keep you informed so you don't have to go down all of the rabbit holes that I went down. I also have my AI toolbox, which I keep up to date on all the latest tools, workflows, and news in AI. So don't forget to give me a subscribe if you find any of this useful, and let's get right into it. Okay, so first off, to keep everything in perspective, here, I wanted to show you an image right here. This is basically the AI landscape as it is today. So if you look here, it has infrastructure, analytics, machine learning, artificial intelligence, applications, all of the companies that are in AI and machine learning that are doing anything in the space. Now that is a lot. And you can bet that some of these will be acquired, but I think it's really important to know how many companies are out there just trying to do stuff here that will be utilized by everyone and some people just don't know how yet. So just to keep that in perspective, I wanted you to see what it looked like. I'm gonna keep a link of that in the description so you could take a look at it yourself and see what you, uh, what you can make of it. So Microsoft and OpenAI plan a $100 billion data center right? And this is going to be a, a supercomputer they are calling Stargate, which is set to launch in 2028. That is pretty crazy. And it says the information reported that Microsoft would likely finance the project, which is expected to be a hundred times more costly than some of the biggest existing data centers today. Altman and Microsoft have spread the supercomputers across five phases. So this is a fifth phase supercomputer, and then they have a fourth phase that they're working on. All of this is to say that there is a lot going on underneath the surface, which is going to be used in your everyday life and what you interact with uh, on a software basis uh, every day. So keep an eye on this. I'll keep you up to date on what happens uh, down the future with Microsoft and OpenAI, but a lot of this news is ongoing. One of the biggest problems I know I had with the Vision Pro when I looked at it, and I know a lot of other people have, is it is very much a solo experience. But if you look at what they came out with recently, they just came out with a Vision Pro Persona. The idea is, is that these can float freely across different apps. And if you look at this, it's starting to look a lot more like you uh, are interacting with a person. So she's interacting with her Vision Pro and they're able to talk about this screen. I mean, it looks pretty interesting. I saw another application where people were playing chess together and it literally looked like they were in the same room playing chess with this board that didn't even exist. So. Again, I think it's gonna get more and more acceptable and I think they're gonna figure out how to share these experiences more. Still, there is a thing about sitting next to a person in a movie theater or sitting next to someone in your living room or actually playing chess with a chessboard in front of you. So that's gonna be interesting to see how that expands, but I'll keep you up to date on all the Vision Pro stuff coming out in the future. So YouTube CEO Neil Mohan spoke recently about Sora and the, one of the heads of Sora's or multiple heads of OpenAI and Sora have been interviewed recently and couldn't quite point to where all of their data was coming from. And uh, it is thought to be that some of the data could be coming from YouTube. And one thing that uh, Neil was saying is that it is against company policy for another company to train their data like OpenAI on YouTube's videos because that is not in the terms of service and uh, with all the people looking at YouTube on a daily basis, it is the second highest search engine there is. You can bet that OpenAI probably has trained it on some of YouTube's data, but this is probably going to keep unfolding. Of course, YouTube is making its own AI algorithms, so it is going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. Now, I know this is a feature that some people have been waiting for in DALI and ChatGPT, but being able to actually edit Dolly images within ChatGPT. This video just came out and it's showing you exactly how to do it. So uh, you can literally just pull up uh, some images of dogs and then what you'd be able to do is click on that and then select a certain piece of the image. 
like for this instance, they're they're picking out the sides of the dog's head. Then you could say add bows to the dog, and it should give you a new image inside ChatGPT with bows on the dog's fur. And there you have it. There are bows on the dog's fur. Now there are still a lot of things that I like in Mid Journey better, and I understand that you want to prompt, but sometimes. I don't know what's better if you're doing it <laughs> just prompting and kind of taking some people call a lazy way out or if you can find other ways to to create this art but um it is a feature that people have wanted so music bed uh an application that you've been able to find music in uh for your short films your commercials it's a really good uh engine and a really good service to do this <laughs> So, so basically what you can do is you can have a song if you find a song and then you could find songs similar to it quicker. You can even take segments out of a song and find segments that are similar to maybe a 10 second area of your cut that you want to, to use the music for. It's pretty incredible and I think some of these tools are really gonna help you get to the work a lot quicker. So uh, I'm gonna keep an eye on Musicbed and see how these come along. And speaking of music, Nicki Minaj, Billie Eilish, Katy Perry, and a whole host of other uh, musicians. You have Imagine Dragons, Billie Eilish, John Bon Jovi, Miranda Lambert, Zane, Cheryl Crow, Pearl Jam. All of these people um, and all of these artists have come together to basically say that uh, they do not want you to use AI in music unethically and uh, it can ruin careers and it can ruin livelihoods and ultimately uh, it is stealing. And uh, I can understand what a lot of this is coming from and it's really about finding ways of maybe even talking with these artists and saying, well, okay, how do we move forward with this since this is, this is happening and there's places where you can create music and songs and lyrics from nothing uh, it is, I'm sure some of it's being trained on these, these musicians and, and ultimately that is not ethical if they are not being paid for it and how do you get them paid for it? I don't know the answers to this and I think uh, there's going to be a lot of people trying to figure that out over the next few years and the people who do it I think are going to be very successful in the next era of how this world of entertainment and music comes about but it is about maybe working together to figure out, well, okay, here's this technology, but how do we bridge the two together? That's all I've been trying to figure out. How do you bridge all of these different things together when things are moving so fast and you have people out to just, you know, utilize what they have and not, not even worry about the consequences. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, all of this unfolds. Speaking of uh, AI and some criticism on it, of course, Jon Stewart gave some interesting uh, points here. the people in charge of AI have told us that just like with the internet and social media, it's actually going to make everything much, much better. Does that have the potential to make life much better? I think it's honestly a layup. I hate to sound like utopic tech bro here, but the increase in quality of life that AI can deliver is extraordinary. AI is the most profound technology humanity is working on. More profound than fire or electricity. Yeah! I'm going to leave a link to Jon Stewart's comments and his video uh, in the description below. It's pretty great. I watched the whole thing. Uh, he has a lot of points. I mean, there's a lot of negative things around AI and how it's being used for, how, what's ethical, what's not ethical, how do we move it forward. But the truth is, is it's not stopping. So the, you've got to have the conversation. You have to have the conversation. Um, I ran into another uh, tool this week called Facet. And it uh, looks like another image generation tool. But what's cool about this is being able to identify different areas of an image and then move those pieces of the image. Like if you see what that just happened, move the handle of the cup from one side to another. You're moving 
the flowers uh, to a different part of the screen. This is really interesting. And then you start using this with uh, layering and things like Adobe's Firefly structure reference. You're going to start having much more control over your image generation and you're going to be able to do anything you want. And and you're not going to have to learn the programs as intricately as you as you had to in the past. You're just going to have to start getting base knowledge and, and then just playing around with it. And that's where the creatives are gonna come in because it's about the tastemakers and who's coming up with the ideas and what are you doing with what you get back. That's true, um, but I'll leave a link to this below. It's, uh, it seems to be a really, cool, uh, a really cool piece. See, look at this. It says, control the placement of image elements. Advanced prompting made easier than ever. Prompt with more than words. You can use images. It's really great. And speaking of that, Kriya, uh, recently added a, uh, a feature where you can use three images to condition your generations with uh, with uh, their new HD model. So if you look right here, you're able to decide how much percentage of each image you want to use as well. So it's like, I want mostly it to be this image or the fish and mostly uh, I like the kind of like mohawk on it and you could just totally blend it in different ways and it's going to just keep getting better. Uh, Kriya has been on top of it and it's been a great, uh, it's been fun to watch and see what they're doing. And lastly for this update, uh, Netflix has just released a trailer for their new show Circle. And Circle is about uh, how do you use social media with a bunch of people to get what you want, maybe catfish or or try and try and become the most popular. I think in this in this house in this social social media experiment. Now uh, the season cast has an extra little special surprise. It has all of these cast members, and the final cast member is an AI bot, which will be catfishing as Max. Netflix has a competition series that will have contestants and they won't know that they're competing against an AI bot that is acting like one of them, catfishing them. And can they figure out if it is a, a real person or not? Or maybe they have no idea it even exists. We'll find out. But for, for now, that is all the, those are all the updates that I have for you this week. Please remember to sign up for the newsletter link below, subscribe to the channel. That is all I have for you this week. I look forward to seeing you uh, next week and I will keep you up to date with all these videos as uh, they come out. So talk to you soon.